Now at five, why the Quapaw Nation is issuing a call for foster families in northeastern Oklahoma. Plus, a program that'll help preserve part of the area's mining history and. We're inching closer to learning who will be on the Democratic ticket with Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm Skyler Henry at the White House with the latest from her search as former President Trump looks to poke holes in her campaign. The four states most watched news starts now. Quapaw Nation is in dire need of foster parents for children. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Dow Quick. Carissa Millard is the Indian Child Welfare Director for Quapaw Nation and says they're having an extra hard time finding a home for teenage children. Quapaw Nation is looking for tribal foster parents that will help kids with their mental health journey and keep them connected to their culture. Each case is different, and we want to make sure that just because this one child needs this service doesn't mean that this child doesn't need another service. So really kind of doing a wraparound type um, creation that helps every child um, in need of these services. Willard says it's very rewarding for foster parents to see the growth of their foster child. Potential foster parents must be at least 21 and complete a home study before they accept the child into their home. Tomorrow is Election Day for Kansas and Missouri. Voters in both states will decide primary elections featuring a variety of races, including state and local offices, as well as some tax issues. Polling places in Missouri open at 6 a.m. and will remain open until 7 p.m. In Kansas, they'll be open from 7 to 7. You'll be able to find results as they come in tomorrow on our website. Of course, that's koamnewsnow.com. Two special prosecutors say they plan to charge a former Central Kansas police chief over his conduct following a raid last year on his town's newspaper. It stems from an August 2023 police raid on the Marion County record and the home of its publisher. Prosecutors say former Marion police chief Gideon Cody obstructed justice by withholding information from investigators. Authorities also say the newspaper and its staff committed no crimes. Staff at the Miners Hall Museum in Franklin, Kansas hope with the help of a federal program they can not only showcase history but also help preserve it. The museum has recently accepted into the Collection Assessment for Preservation Program, also known as CAPS. The program helps different sites learn what steps they can take to improve their preservation efforts. The museum is one of just 14 locations receiving data loggers, which will tell them what changes need to be made to the site. According to museum staff, the acceptance into the program couldn't have come at a better time as they hope to expand the facilities. We have actually uh, drawn some tentative plans of what we'd like to do, and this will give us a lot of guidance in what we need to do and plan for in that new building by showing us what we're doing correctly and incorrectly currently. The Miners Hall Museum says they hope to receive a final report on the results of the program in the beginning of the and next year. Students and parents in Carthage will get a chance to learn about the district's bus routes and procedures tomorrow. The school bus information night will also include a bus tour, a safety lesson on and around the bus, and a meeting with the district's transportation team. That event's going to run from a 4 to 7 p.m. tomorrow at the Carthage High School Commons and is available to all students in the district and their parents. Let's check in with meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney now for a first look at the weather. Today got pretty warm. Temperatures up to 95, 96 out in the Joplin area. Feels a little bit warmer. We're still having pretty low humidity, so the heat index is not going to be as high. We also have winds shifting out of the south. So we're getting a little bit more of that southerly breeze, those warmer temperatures as we continue over the next couple of days across the region. 95 out in Stockton, 99 in Fort Scott, 98 Parsons, Chanute, Neodice, 90 or 100 Yates Center, Sedan, Independence. So out there in the western counties, pretty warm. We also still have a uh, higher heat index regardless of lower humidity. So still getting up to about 100 degrees out there. We also have a heat advisory for a few of our counties out in Oklahoma through tomorrow. We may see a couple more pop up, but I'll talk more about that in just a bit. See you soon. Vice President Kamala Harris is on the verge of announcing who she wants to join her on the Democratic ticket for the White House. 
This comes as a new CBS News poll shows Harris has closed the gap with former President Donald Trump. But that poll was taken before a global drop in the stock markets. Skylar Henry has more details now from the White House. Vice President Kamala Harris left the Naval Observatory Monday afternoon, headed to meetings at the White House. On Sunday, at least three running mate finalists were seen arriving at the vice president's home for in-person interviews. Harris is expected to pick one of these six men to join her on the Democratic ticket. CBS News has learned she plans to announce her choice Tuesday morning, just in time for a new running mate to join her for a campaign swing through seven battleground states. It's an honor to be considered, uh, but regardless of what happens through the process, uh, I'm going to do everything I can to get Kamala Harris elected as president of the United States this November. A new CBS News poll now shows Harris statistically tied with former President Trump in those battlegrounds, as well as nationally. The poll shows a big jump for Democrats compared to when President Biden was still running. When he dropped out, he had a 5% deficit nationwide. Well, thank you. Trump campaigned in the battleground state of Georgia over the weekend rally at the same arena where Vice President Harris campaigned a few days earlier. If Harris wins this election, you will quickly have a Kamala economic crash. You're going to have a crash. The CBS News poll shows Trump with a lead over Harris when it comes to the economy. Donald Trump still has a big edge on that, just like he did against Joe Biden. Trump has been posting about the markets dropping on social media throughout the day, including this one saying simply, Trump cash versus Kamala crash. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Harris is expected to announce her pick tomorrow morning, followed by a video before holding a rally in Pennsylvania later in the day. A little bit later, we're going to have more details on today's stock market drop. Stocks fall worldwide over fears of a weakening economy. I'm Jared Hill with a look at what it all means for your investments. But up first, a new study examining how long COVID impacts underserved communities. That's next in Health Watch. Topping today's Health Watch, a new study published in JAMA finds the exploding popularity of Ozempic and Wagovi among patients with private insurance could be making it harder for people on Medicaid or Medicare to get access to the drugs. A separate study found the weight loss and diabetics drugs are actively being sold without prescription by illegal online pharmacies. As COVID is again rising in cases this summer, one hospital group in New York City has joined the national effort to examine the impact long COVID is having on black and Latino communities. Jesse Mitchell reports. After Dora Louise Summers caught COVID two years ago, she never quite fully recovered. Brain fog, shortness of breath, feeling weak. You know the answer to it, but when you get ready to say it, it's like, Wait a minute. Summers recently found herself referred to Mount Sinai's new long COVID clinic in East Harlem, where Dr. Rachel Engelberg is studying the ongoing effects of the pandemic on underserved communities. Patients who are in Harlem and the Bronx were hardest hit by COVID during the height of the pandemic. These are likely the populations that are really bearing the brunt of long COVID now. And so there's definitely a need to reach those patients and get them into care. Mount Sinai is one of nine long COVID clinics nationwide now established established and funded by the federal government for five years as they meet monthly to share their case studies. We can more formally standardize what the protocols are so that for the majority of doctors, it's not such a confusing situation where you're not sure what to do, but maybe it becomes more algorithmic of how you approach the different symptom burden. Engelberg says while there's no cure or treatment standard yet, the team can help alleviate the ailments that come with long COVID. Take them seriously because other things can materialize behind that. And if you're experiencing some of the same symptoms as Summers for three months or longer beyond your COVID diagnosis, see a doctor about your options. Jesse Mitchell, CBS News, New York. Each long COVID program received $1 million of the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. A new British study finds teenagers who spend time on their smartphones when they should be doing something else, they're twice as likely to suffer from anxiety and three times as likely to suffer from depression. In older teenagers, problematic screen time was associated with insomnia. And a new survey of California adults finds more than half say they've been affected by an extreme weather event in the past two years. 23% of that group 
said the weather has negatively impacted their mental health. Women, people with high levels of education and rural residents reported disproportionately high levels of poor mental health. That is a look at today's health news a little bit later. What could be behind the worldwide stock market sell-off? And temperatures continue to increase over the next couple days. We'll talk about it right after the break. It's a pretty hot day today. Luckily, humidity is still staying relatively low. We've got a dry, lot hot air mass over our area. Taking a look outside Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. A few clouds out there, but overall it's been a mostly sunny day today. And like I said, temperature is getting up to the upper 90s and even in some areas reaching about 100, 101. We don't have any rainfall, but we do have a few clouds. We're not going to see any rain for majority of the week. We do have a few heat advisories popping up, especially out in Oklahoma. Those are going to continue all the way through Tuesday 9 p.m. Temperatures drop after Tuesday, so we'll likely see a few more heat advisories popping up, especially out in the western counties, even maybe into the central counties, Joplin, Pittsburgh, but that's not going to come until later today or early tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on it. We do also have an air mass moving in, going to bring in some more moisture. You can see that moisture line right there, not bringing any storms. It's going to be a dry frontal uh, boundary moving through, but it is going to drop those temperatures and also raise humidity. So we see that starting to make its way through early Tuesday morning, but all of us have that cooler air mass moving in by Tuesday evening. So unfortunately, temperatures on Tuesday are still going to be pretty hot. After that, we're looking pretty good until uh, Wednesday. Oh, it looks like those disappeared, but Wednesday humidity is going to be a little bit higher up in the 40% to 50% range and temperatures are going to be in the mid 80s. So we've got um, morning, we've got that boundary starting to move in. Winds are shifting and then by middle of the day, 101 out in Neosho, 98 for our high in Joplin. Most of the southern counties a little higher, 102 out in Nawada, 103 in Vanita. So the southern counties likely going to see that heat advisory possibly getting up to maybe Parsons, Joplin, Carthage. We're going to keep an eye on that, but then we have that air mass moving in from the north. Winds have shifted, so high temperatures on Wednesday, 86 Joplin, 85 Pittsburgh, 87 Independence, 89 J, 90 Bella Vista, so upper 80s, low 90s, looking pretty good on Wednesday. And that's gonna continue for the rest of the week. Unfortunately, temperatures tomorrow possibly reaching 100 degrees. Hot and sunny, but winds do shift by the afternoon from the south to the north. And then we're gonna get that northerly breeze, that cooler air mass, we're also not going to see any rainfall until possibly early Thursday morning. We've got a few showers starting to push into the area by about 6 a.m. Maybe a thunderstorm or two and those quickly move off to Joplin Metro and then dissipate. We're not getting a lot of rainfall from that, but it might help a little bit uh, with the dry conditions that we've had for the last week or so. After that, we may have a chance for another shower Friday morning, but our next Full rain chances aren't going to be until next week, but we have a whole week of scattered showers, scattered thunderstorm chances. We're going to keep an eye on and until then we've got those mid 80 to upper 80 degree weather all the way through Monday. Temperatures do return back to normal next week, but I'm definitely going to enjoy the cooler temperatures later on this weekend. Yeah, highs in the 80s. That sounds great. I'm loving it. Thanks, Lindsay. Hurricane Debbie did make landfall as a Category 1 storm in the Big Bend region of Florida's Gulf Coast today. Began a slow crawl across the state, causing potentially dangerous storm surges, heavy rainfall, catastrophic flooding. Even with the slight dip in intensity, Debbie was forecast to bring dangerous storm surge to parts of the Gulf Coast to Florida through at least this afternoon. Multiple days of torrential rainfall are forecast with potentially historic flooding in Georgia and in the Carolinas. When severe weather strikes locally, you're going to want to stay informed, and you can do that by scanning this QR code. You can do it right now. It'll take you to the KOAM News Now YouTube page, where our weather team will live stream during severe weather events to give you updated information. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Coming up, a candy maker gobbles up a snack maker. Topping today's consumer watch, a major drop in stock markets worldwide is furthering fears of a recession, but many experts are advising calm. 
CBS News senior business and tech correspondent Jolene Kent looks at what's behind the sell-off and what 401k investors should do. The closing bell marked another major downturn on Wall Street. The Dow Jones fell more than 1,000 points and the Nasdaq dropped significantly after investors dumped tech stocks. Many markets overseas also saw big losses. Japan's Nikkei index plunged 12 percent, its worst day since 1987. I think there's a generalized concern. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger points to Friday's U.S. jobs report that showed hiring slowed more than expected. And there are signs Americans are spending less. Put those two together and we say, OK, the economy is slowing down. We don't see a recession today. But the fear is that this could change pretty dramatically. It's certainly not off the table. Jonathan Corpina with Meridian Equity Partner says a recession is possible, but he also believes the overall economy remains strong and the market was due for a correction. I will debate that our market probably moved too far too fast and it's now pulling back into a range where it actually should be. And experts say the average person does not need to panic. If you are a long-term investor, take a deep breath. It is very scary, I get it. But if you're investing for decades in the future, you stay still, you do nothing. You try to maintain your game plan. Wall Street wants to know the Federal Reserve's game plan. Last week, the central bank left interest rates unchanged in an attempt to bring inflation down further. Analysts now expect a significant rate cut next month to help boost the economy. Jolene Kent, CBS News, New York. One Goldman Sachs economist is raising the chance of a recession in the next 12 months from 15 to 25 percent. Mars, the maker of brands including M&Ms and Snickers, yum yum, they announced they're buying Kalanova, which makes snacks like Cheez-It and Pringles. The deal would be one of the biggest combinations in the snack food industry. Kalanova separated from Kellogg's in a spinoff last year. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission announced a recall of a line of foldable bicycles. The agency says the Brompton foldable T-line bike can suffer a loss of alignment between the handlebar and front wheel. That can cause the rider to lose control of the steering, posing a fall hazard. Brompton has received more than a dozen reports of steering misalignment or loss of steering control with no injuries reported. At the box office, Deadpool and Wolverine is already the highest grossing R-rated movie ever. That's not accounting for inflation. In its second weekend, the summer blockbuster starring Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman raked in 97 million bucks. That's according to studio estimates. Twisters came in a distant second place with more than $22 million in sales. And M. Night uh, Shyamalan has Trap took the third spot. That movie made more than 15 million. Summer movie flops led to a deep drop in revenue for the AMC theater chain. The theater's revenues fell almost 24 percent during the three-month period ending in June. It went from 1.35 billion dollars this time last year to just over a billion this year. A final check of the forecast is up next. Up next on the CBS Evening News, the fallout from today's massive Wall Street retreat. Then on KOAM News at 6, we're going to take a closer look at the need for more foster parents in Northeast Oklahoma. Plus, your chance to vote on new personalized license plate designs in Kansas. And the Riverton 12U All-Stars play in an elimination game. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then KOAM News at 6. Yes, we do have some more hot weather ahead of us, but hold on because eventually relief is also on the horizon. We really only have one more day of pretty high temperatures. So I've got it as a possible alert day just because high temperatures up to 100, high heat index values, but a frontal boundary moves through Tuesday evening, dropping temperatures all through the weekend to the mid 80s. Yeah, in the mid 80s sounds wonderful as the high. It definitely does, I'm loving that. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here at six. Let's make it a great evening.